Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I finally made it. I can't believe I finally made it. Video is uploaded, you guys. Um, what a hell of a weekend I had. Um, first of all, welcome everybody, of course. I'm not going through all of you and say hello to everybody individually. Let's uh, please um, just get right into this. I'm so super, super, super tired. I slept two hours. But um, yeah, I think I did good. I hope you guys like it. Today, we're going to watch the second part of the documentary Into the Abyss. Was a little bit of a kerfuffle yesterday. Mock Boys, big shout out to Mock Boys. He did a great job doing my voiceover. But yeah, there were a little bit difficulties, technical uh, difficulties. Then um, we overslept. Yeah, stuff like that. Anyways, how are you guys? Are you excited? I'm excited. And you know what? When I thought nothing could go wrong, right? I uploaded the wrong format. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, after this live stream, you know, not everybody wants to see a discussion. I'm going to upload it again. And then in the normal right format. Hi, Dipshit Dave. How are you? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, what else is there to say? Shall we get right into this? Or let's wait till a few more people come in. And yeah, how was your weekend? My weekend was stressful. Obviously. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> Nobody slept in my family, you know. And then is it the same with your families, guys? Um, once you work on something, they're all up and one is playing the keyboard and the other one's playing Lego. Or the other one sings. Next one wants to take a shower, right? And then when you're not doing nothing, then it's peace. Yeah, this is how it is here with my family. <laughs> but you got to love them. Happy birthday, Shannon. Happy 38th birthday, Shannon. I hope you're having it good wherever you are. All right, I think we should just start. I'm talking nonsense. So, are you guys ready to see what I did the last few days? Where's my Dawn? Where's my Dave? It's my birthday on Friday, too. I didn't want to go live on, on my birthday, but why not? So... Um, yeah, and I need a well-deserved break from the what's case until Friday. <laughs> All right, let's start. Get your earphones in. I did not double check on the sound or anything. I just wanted this to just get ready and upload it. Um, the reason you're not going to see me is obviously because I have a lack of sleep. And bags under my eyes, like to my, down to my knees. So let's do this. Let me share my screen. Oh, which one is it? Ah, this one. I'm going to be watching this with you. And afterwards, we can have a little discussion if you guys are up for it but um not very long because i have my first day at work tomorrow so yeah let's do this can you guys see it good hold on yeah it's the um, 
it's the wrong format. I'm very sorry about that, but <clears throat> I just wanted to get it over with. All right. I'm going to mute myself. Have fun. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. first part of the documentary, we took a deep dive into the overall family dynamics, the relationship between Shanann and her friends, as well as the affair of Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger. We now know what the release discovery is trying to tell us. Chris Watts planned to kill his family by himself. He is guilty, and everyone else involved in this tragedy is a victim. But did he really? Was the investigation really flawless? Let's take a look. Before I go into the flawless investigation and deeper into the publicly available discovery file, I want to show you some basics on how the forensic technician built the timeline of the document. In my words, the technician examined a number of four cell phones. Those are item 40, Chris Watts' work cell phone. Item 41, Chris Watts' personal cell phone. Item 42, Shanann Watts' personal phone and item 43, Nicole Kessinger's personal cell phone. Example, 41-TL7672 through 7673, images 7524.heic through 7525.heic. The first number is the item number examined. TL represents the entry of the phone timeline meaning Celebrite gives you a number for each entry on a cell phone. Every incoming and outgoing call, every picture taken, every message sent, and so on. The same with image numbers. Each entry or event has its own log in a cell phone. He downloaded the data via Celebrite, but was, as stated in the discovery, not able to recover all data, especially not because Longmont police had no technical equipment to extract data from Apple devices. What we have is a mixed up, unclear data timeline full of errors, but more on that later. Please note that the report is drafted manually and can be edited at any time. Chris Watts' phone as well as all raw data or call logs were never released. Is this the reason why? Also note that the technician includes personal emotions and speculations throughout his report and makes statements that cannot be proven to be true. Let's clear up some myths. For a start, Kessinger's search for Shanann and Chris in 2017. Many people say that Kessinger received a phone provided by Anna Darko that belonged to a former employee who was searching for Shanann and Chris in 2017. I don't know where this came from, but Kessinger never received a work phone. She used her personal phone all the time. The second myth regarding Kessinger's search was that the report was a typo. 
in that Kessinger actually searched for Shanann on August the 3rd, 2018, and not 2017. This is not true, and I'll show you why. Look at her timeline entry of the event. Item 43, her personal phone. Timeline entry, search 2290. Now, let's look at an event in her phone of August 2018. Item 43, timeline entry, search 27,315 through 27,322 and 27,326 through 27,333. Remember, each search, call, etc. logs an event the so-called timeline number. Now, let's compare the two. As you can see, between August 2017 and August 2018, Kessinger used Google search for over 25,000 times. The search in 2017 is no typo. Another myth, the doll picture. Who took it? Who sent it? Here's your answer. Simultaneously, I'll give you the first example of a botched report that was drafted to show premeditation. August 9th, 2018. Shanann shared an image of her unborn son, Nico, with Sarah Nudd. Item 42. Timeline 151685. Image number. 7,834. Now, the technician makes the doll photo out to be taken and sent by Chris Watts, but he made an error. Item 41, Chris Watts, personal phone, timeline, 7299 through 7300. So far, so good, but look at that image number. Now let's take a look at Chris Watts' next available image number and compare the two. August 12, 2018, item 41, timeline 7671, image number 7524 and 7525. As you can see, three days later, Watts still did not reach image number 7,834. The technician further states that Chris Watts sent this image to Shanann, and she replied, don't know what to think about this. This conversation never occurred. Shanann actually posted this on Facebook and did not send Chris Watts a reply with those words via message. Let alone was he at home to play with the kids at 11.46 a.m. On July 14, 2018, Shanann posted the first outfit she bought for Baby Watts on Facebook. According to Kessinger, she visited Chris in his house for the first time to help him with his diet plan. Things got out of control quickly and Kessinger stormed out of the house when she learned that Chris and Shanann had planned a third child before her and Watts met. Sitting in her truck outside of Watts' residence, she called and messaged Chris constantly. Later that day, she apologized by saying, I got mad because I thought I could give you a son. Starting July 16th, 2018 and going forward, Chris Watts included Kessinger in his daily morning call routine. It is known that the keypad sensor of the Watts garage door was broken. It was broken for quite some time going back to early 2018. Watts called Vivint, their home security system provider, on three different occasions regarding the issue. On July 15, 2018, at 12.36 hours, Watts called Vivint and held a 20-minute conversation. 
he entered Vivint into his contacts following the call. 1250 hours, Watts took three images of his basement from different perspectives to capture the layout. While on the phone with Vivint, why would he be in the basement taking images when the purpose of the call was to fix the garage door keypad? He called Vivint on two more occasions, July 26th and July 30th one day before leaving for North Carolina. All Vivint changes made would be logged and a confirmation email would have been issued to Shanann's email address, which was connected to Vivint for all notifications and or issues with the system. So was Chris calling Vivint because he wanted information regarding the motion sensor in the, his basement? Was that phone call to Vivint being made to avoid Shanann receiving any information about any changes? Was he taking pictures of the basement layout because of a plan in place? To understand how all those strange events tie into one another, we need to take a deeper look at Chris Watts' whereabouts and actions prior to the murders. I've noticed throughout the discovery that Chris Watts took several images of sunflowers at different locations. The first time he does so is on July 16th. At 8.35 hours, Watts took three photographs from an Anadarko corporate office in Platteville, one of which was of a sunflower near what appears to be his work truck. According to his Geotab fleet GPS system, Chris Watts was taking the picture exactly here. The second time he took pictures was the next day, July 17th. 10, 12 hours to 11.46 hours, Watts took several images of trees and grassland flowers in an open prairie just north of Roggin. According to his Geotab fleet GPS system, Chris Watts was taking pictures here. Chris Watts took a total of 10 pictures on various survey sites. Survey was not his usual work area. His main area according to GPS logs, was the Fort Lupton area, where he also spent much time at the Safeway parking lot. July 17th was the only time known to us he went to the survey area before the murders. On this day, July 17th, he also took a picture of his brand new work boots. The discovery states, 1637 hours, Watts took a photograph of his new work boots identical to those found in the Lexus during that search. I recall his coworker, Troy McCoy, saying that he wore old boots and baggy clothes on Monday morning. Why would someone take a picture of new work boots? Maybe to mislead law enforcement in case they take boot impressions on site later on? Wait, wait, look into those texts, look for his ABC phone for that one conversation we had where he screenshotted me what he did on Monday. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you said it, it, that's his Anna Dark Uh huh. Okay. And that should be the only like recent. Like there's probably stuff if you guys are able to pull it from way, way back that we talked, but mm -hmm. nothing. The thing we talked about was him proving that he went to the oil field. That he went to work. That he went to work that morning yeah. at whatever site he was supposed to go to yeah. to check on the. So that'll be in the release. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Who did he show the picture to? Another kind of proof for someone? Nina Darko gift cards. Many suspect that Chris Watts paid the last meal he had with Kessinger at the Lazy Dog with his debit card instead of Anna Darko gift cards because he did not care if Shanann found out about the affair. The truth is, though, that Chris Watts paid for their meal by debit card simply because he ran out of money on his three Anadarko gift cards. From July 17th through July 31st, his gift card statements show that he spent $550 for or with Kessinger on steak, cheesecake, wine and wine bottle openers, beer, groceries, Restaurants, parking tickets, weekend trips, Victoria's Secret, 
in their other activities. His constant login to my prepaid center shows that he was well aware of the money he had left on those gift cards. Had he carefully researched for best prices on items and restaurants beforehand? But his gift card statements tell us more. You can see that everything he researched beforehand, he purchased. Chris Watts was kind of a planner and obviously had budgeting skills. The gift card statements also give away his location at a certain time. Ever since July 14th, Watson Kessinger's relationship was developing quickly. When you follow along with that discovery, you can clearly see that every time they met, Watts is searching Google for certain topics. This gives you a good idea of what the two had been talking about prior. Did Watts make any promises to Kessinger on July 14th? On July 18th, 2018, Watts was using the Secret Calculator app for the first time, transferring the first infamous picture of Kessinger. Why would Kessinger recommend a secret app? Wasn't she under the impression Watts was leaving his wife anyway? Wasn't that what Watts had told her? Didn't she state that they were in the process of a separation? That he already slept in the basement? So why worry about what Shanann would be discovering? The following is a paragraph from a letter Chris wrote. When I met Nikki, I didn't know I was unhappy. She asked me all those questions that brought it out of me. She sought me out. She got plenty of attention in the office, but her aim was set on me. Even showing her a picture of my kids and telling her I was married did not detour her efforts. She asked questions about my marriage that no one else did. I opened up and confided in her, the first of many mistakes. Was Kessinger developing an obsession with Watts? We get a fair idea of Kessinger's behavior when we look deeper. Having sat in his truck for a total of 38 minutes talking to Kessinger after coming home, Watts finally turns the engine off when their call ends. Kessinger, being in the Longmont area at that time, decided to drive over to Watts' house, calling him from outside, leaving a creepy voicemail. Six minutes later, at 4.40 p.m., he finally calls her back, not knowing she was outside of his house. They talked for 11 minutes. After all the strange events happening from July 14th onwards, Kessinger searched for topics concerning their affair for the first time on Google. July 24th, 13, 17 hours, Kessinger searched Google for, man I'm having affair with says he will leave his wife. Looking at her searches throughout, it becomes clear that Kessinger very well knew that Watts was married and that he was probably undecided on what to do. It also becomes clear that she was the pushing force when it came to him leaving Shanann and not the other way around as she claims in her interviews with law enforcement. Having searched for restaurants, clean eating, and the lazy dog the day prior to the 23rd of July, according to a statement given from Watts to us, he came home from work at 3.37 p.m., got changed, went to the lazy dog for a takeaway, and immediately went to Kessinger's apartment where they spent some time together. Between 4.05 and 4.45, Sandra Rusick, called Watts 12 times, connecting on occasion. They held a roughly 30-minute conversation. The connection issues between the calls could indicate that Watts was moving on his way to Kessinger's. 5.30 p.m., having not heard from Watts in a few hours, Shanann sent him a message asking if he was still alive. Looking at Watts' work truck GPS, we see that the Safeway parking lot was visited by Watts very frequently. 
this might be due to him working in the area. By the end of July, the time Watt spent at the parking lot was noticeable, often during work hours. He will later meet up with his co-worker, Troy McCoy, right there at this Safeway parking lot for the jailbroke fire stick. It is evident that on July 25th, three days before the sand dunes trip, Kessinger was constantly on Watts' mind. 08, 41 hours through 1207 hours, Watts searched Google on the following topics. When to say I love you. When to say I love you for the first time in a new relationship. What do you feel when someone tells you they love you? How does it feel when someone says I love you? Arriving at home that day, Watts talks to Shanann while Kessinger leaves another creepy voicemail. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Immediately bye. after the call with Shanann ended, Watts calls Kessinger back and the two discuss the upcoming sand dunes trip. As I explained before, we get a very good idea of what they talk about since after every conversation, Watts is searching Google for certain topics. 1831 hours, Watts searched Google for sand dunes weather. Leading up to the sand dunes trip, scheduled for Saturday, July 28th, Watts became increasingly concerned about his finances. He had spent most funds available on his Anadarko gift cards. The discovery tells us he is constantly checking his balance by logging into his account via My Prepaid Center and calling Chase Bank. After talking to Shanann, he resumes his efforts regarding the sensor and calls Vivian. This time, he does not take any pictures during the call. What is very obvious throughout the discovery is that many times while Watts is on the phone with Shanann, he transfers images of Kessinger into his secret calculator app. Coincidence? Watts again searched Google for the lazy dog, even though he knew where it was located. He had been there two days earlier to get some takeaway. After that, he checks his balance again. Thank you so much for coming out here with me, Christopher. I'm having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me. And I'm glad that you're having a blast. I am so out of breath. Back at work on July 30th, Watts was bombarded with additional problems that give us a clear picture about the mental pressure he must have been under additionally to keeping his affair with Kessinger a secret. 08, 11 hours, Shanann sent Watts an insurance identification card issued by USAA for their 2016 Lexus RX. The effective dates are August 15th, 2018 through February 15th, 2019. 09, 18 hours. Shanann sent Watts three images of swelling to the right ankle of one of their daughters. Watts commented, it looks like her ankle is dislocated in that one picture. Shanann agreed and said, she may need special shoes. 17, 14 hours. Watts called Vivint and held a 10 minute conversation. 17, 39 and 17, 49 hours. Shanann asked Watts what they said. Although his call with Vivint ended nearly 30 minutes earlier, Watts responded with, he was still on the phone, resetting settings and sensitivity. Should be good now, I'll monitor it. Watts spent the rest of the night researching love songs and love letters.
On July 31st, Watts was starting his day early, having left the house before 3 a.m. in the morning to go to the airport, he messaged Shanann. At airport, sending her pictures of various parking signs. He quickly transfers 53 pictures and two videos of Kessendran himself documenting his sand dunes trip into his secret calculator app. Carve it up. After boarding, he tells Shanann he's on the plane and she immediately calls him with concerns about the high-priced parking arrangements at the airport. She texts him, you never ever listen to me. She asked, how much a day? Watts sent the photograph of the parking signs and advised $16. Shanann asked which lot and Watts said the East Economy lot. Shanann replied, $130 we can't spend at the beach. Shanann asked Watts to text her when he lands in Atlanta. Watts agreed. While on the plane, Watts resumed his preparations to hide his affair with Kessinger from Shanam by deleting Kessinger's contact in his phone. Arriving in North Carolina, there are indicators that they did not sleep in the same room together. Not only was he talking to Kessinger for 38 minutes that night, also at 2149 hours, Shanann asked Watts, can you set alarm for five and wake me please? Watts replied, yep, I got it, love you. Shanann reciprocated. Despite their argumentative stay in North Carolina, Watts managed to speak to Kessinger daily, transferring images of her into a secret calculator app while the family visited Myrtle Beach in the trampoline park. Here again, if you take a closer look at their searches after having a conversation on the phone or through text messages, it tells you almost every time what they must have spoken about. What did Watts promise to a more and more demanding Nicole Kessinger? Was she freaking out again? Did he tell her he is going to marry her? Like I stated in my first part of the documentary. During the time in North Carolina and after all that went down with Nutgate, Watts opened up to his family and told them about his plans of a separation, as well as about his plans to sell the house and move to a small apartment with bunk beds for the kids. During the whole stay, Shanann grew increasingly concerned about her marriage to Watts and was waiting for an explanation for his recent behavior. That unfortunately never came. She discussed the issue with her friends who were trying to give her advice. Shanann tells her friends that Watts did say he wouldn't mind if she aborted Nico. Watts later states that this wouldn't be true and that he has no clue why she would say such things. The family flew back to Colorado on August the 7th. Before leaving and talking about previous events and arguments, Watts left this note with his parents, to whom it may concern. If anyone gets this letter, I would never do anything to hurt myself or my children or my wife. If anything happens to me, please investigate my wife, Chris Watts. From August 7, 2018, things are starting to get really weird concerning the discovery released by Well County. The technician seems to mix up a lot of events, data, phone entries, and item numbers. And not only that, he puts many personal opinions, emotions, and assumptions into his report, which does not look very professional, comparing reports of other cases. You will see those errors throughout the discovery. To get a clear picture on a correct timeline, I put the technician's timeline in order. Here's the official discovery lets you to believe 
that Chris and Shanann were arguing up to the point where Shanann was in Arizona. But that's not the case at all. Watts attended the ultrasound, even though he visited Kessinger shortly before. After that, the Watts family held a private gender reveal party and planned a getaway weekend to Aspen. When Shanann left for Arizona that morning, she was in good spirits and things seemed to get back to normal. She left Watts a letter on the kitchen counter. Watts was more talkative, and Shanann even states to her friends that he is kind of the old Chris again, and that he even kissed her before going to bed in the basement. At this point, I have to make a personal observation. When Shanann was in North Carolina, Kessinger had full control over Watts. That was not the case when Chris was joining his family in NC for a week. What I also observed was when Shanann was back home, he started caring for her again. My personal belief is that this tragedy would have probably never happened had Shanann not gone on the Arizona trip. Despite Kessinger knowing that Watts was off work on Friday, 10th of August, and Shanann left for Arizona, she did not make contact with him via phone until 8.57 that night. Had they seen each other during the day? Shanann sent Watts a message. Good morning, honey. Started to make you wake up early twice today. I didn't want the alarm going off. We are checked in and everything. It's already a madhouse here today. Enjoy the girls. Don't forget King Supers 10 to 11. I told Bella I was leaving for work with Nikki and assured her that I was always coming home. They usually don't eat right away lately. Give them lots of kisses for me. Thank you for everything last night. I miss and love you guys so much. I'm still in shock we're having a little boy. I'm so excited and happy. I really thought it was another girl. Thank you for letting me hold you this morning. It felt good. Your letter is on the counter. Have a great time with the kiddos. They truly missed you. Love you, baby. Send me pics. I don't know why I feel really weak standing. I'm drinking a Gatorade and had a biscuit. Getting ready to take off. What time the kids wake up? Watts speculated her weakness was from a lack of sleep. Watts told her that Bella just woke up and Celeste was still asleep. When Jeremy Lindstrom, a friend of both Shanann and Chris, congratulates Chris to them having a boy, Chris takes the opportunity to ask, Do you think McKenna's available to watch the girls for a few hours tomorrow night? I went to raffle at work for a Rockies game. It's with people I don't know from work, but I haven't been able to get to a game where the kids aren't involved and only last an inning, LOL. Jeremy replied, of course, and asked which house. Watch replied, I would say my house because the girls would fall asleep easier and all it would be would be watching the monitor. When asked what time, Watt said 5.30 p.m. Game starts at 6.15. Shanann told her friends earlier that Chris wanted to move to Brighton. She sent him the web address of a realtor, which he visits minutes later. By that time, Watts had deleted his Facebook and other various social media accounts. He later told investigators that this was a recommendation of Kessinger. At around 13.34 hours, Watts asked McCoy what time he wanted to meet for that fire stick. By 15.05 hours, Watts told McCoy he had arrived at their meeting location. McCoy later states that Chris brought Bella and Cece along and that both kids were happily sitting in the back seat of the Lexus eating ice cream. Kessinger went to a Rockies game that night, but left early for unknown reasons. For the most part, Shanann was upbeat and optimistic this day for the first time in weeks. This is evidenced in her conversations with others via messages. In the weeks preceding, Shanann was heartbroken, confused, and emotionally distraught. At present, however, Shanann felt they turned a corner and Watts was finally communicating with her and was willing to work towards fixing whatever was wrong. Shanann shared this news with many and her friends sent happy and supportive responses. Clearly things between Shanann and Chris have improved since their private gender reveal party and are on good talking terms. It is interesting that the technician noted that Watt's phone connected to his home router by 11.10 p.m. At 11.20 p.m., Watt sent this message to Kessinger. Saturday, August 11th, started off with a phone call at 2.15 a.m., which Watts did not answer. Two minutes later, Kessinger calls him again, and they talk for 13 minutes. Shanann sent a message to Watts. Good morning, baby. Are the girls up? Watts replied, good morning. They are watching cartoons in bed. Shanann described the thunderstorms the night before in Arizona. Minutes later, Shanann asked Watts, do you want the NFL package for the fall? 
she searched Direct TV for information about the sports package. Watts replied he wanted to see if the Fire Stick streaming flash drive can save them from spending the money. And Shanann said, okay, baby. Although not found in Watts' phone, Shanann asked him, have you talked to Bella about if we have a boy? Watts said not yet and added, she said when the baby comes out, she will pretend it's a girl. She indicated that she was laughing and said, OMG, I love her. Watts' response to Shanann indicates that he did talk about baby Nico with the girls. Before Watts went to see Kessinger that night, he searched for the Lazy Dog on 120th Street and the Rusty Bucket. Unfortunately, the Lazy Dog on 120th Street didn't have the menu items they wanted, so they, meanwhile, Shanann received the notification that $63 had been spent at the Lazy Dog. She had her suspicions. 22 19 hours. Shanann searched Google and the internet for a lazy dog menu, lazy dog restaurant, and bar, find a location. Watts told Shanann that he had a salmon meal at the lazy dog and that he was paying for some beers for the crew after the Rockies game. 22 28 hours. Watts called Shanann and held a three minute conversation immediately afterwards. She sent Watts a message Oh, save your receipt so we can write it off. But this meeting has always been questioned. In law enforcement search for possible surveillance footage, it turned out that no cameras worked or no cameras were installed in the surrounding area of the Lazy Dog. When requested by law enforcement, the restaurant itself was unable to provide any surveillance footage. On his way home, Watts stopped by an ATM to get money so he could pay the babysitter McKenna and was captured on a security camera at the gas station near his house. Watts arrived at home around 10.30 p.m. McKenna's mother later stated in her interview that she picked her daughter up that night, but waited for her in her vehicle parked in the street. McKenna told her mother that the house was kind of messy and not in the tidy state it normally is. The girl stated that Dieter followed her on her way out. Meanwhile, Kessinger searched the internet for Chris Watts, Shanann Watts, Ronnie Watts, and 2825 Saratoga Trail. A Kessinger came across Shanann's Facebook page and other social media accounts while searching the internet is now indisputable. She looked them up just like she did in 2017. That she also looked up Chris's father, Ronnie, at this stage is creepy. She stated that she was helping him find a new place as well as providing help setting up a new bank account. Kessinger stated, she was always good with money. When agents later asked her in detail whereabout she was looking for apartments, she stated that she was trying to get a place for him near work and close to the girls' school. Investigators were wondering if she knew where the girls' school was. Kessinger said no. Family of Chris later state that he told them he had decided to stay with his family that night. We know that Kessinger stalked the family on occasions. I want to show you what neighbor Nate's surveillance camera captured that Saturday night. According to messages Shanann sent to her friends, things were getting better in the Watts household. Shanann texts her friends, I need to do better with my calendar. I don't block out family time. I fill in family time. He, Watts, said to me last night, it has nothing to do with business though. Addie said she thought this could have been the issue and insisted Shanann make more time for the family. Shanann replied, no, I agree. No, I think it's itty bitty things. I sometimes can be bitchy and he gets that side of me. I know I tend to make him feel like he isn't able to do things because I have control issues. He said the other night, he wishes I'd just let him hang up a picture. 9.57 hours. Shanann asked Watts, can you do me a favor today if you have the time? Can you get the girls backpacks ready for tomorrow with blankets and spare clothes, please? If not, I can do it in the a.m. Watts said he would. 10.32 hours. Shanann asked Watts to send her some pictures of the girls. I missed them. 13.30 hours. Watts took photographs of the girls playing in the distance in a backyard near a small pool at the Lindstrom's birthday party. Kessinger was aware of the birthday party. She had not called Watts until later that night, although they exchanged text messages. Watts later stated he came back home from the birthday party between 4.30 and 5 p.m. Many people speculate 
that there could be the possibility that the girls never came home from the birthday party. Let's take a look at this scenario by creating a little timeline using router log data and timestamps of text messages. 9.29 AM, Watt's work phone connects to his home router and does not reconnect on that day. That means he did not carry his work phone when he was at the birthday party. Otherwise, it would have reconnected when he got home. 10.32 AM, Shanann asked Watts to send her some pictures of the girls. I missed them. Watts then sent two photos of the girls. Note that Bella wore the same outfit morning as she wore to the birthday party. 10.45 AM, Watts searched the internet for a volcano. 12.15 PM, Watts' personal phone reconnects to his home router. Same scenario with his work phone previously, with one exception. He did carry his personal phone when he was at the birthday party. He had exchanged messages with Kessinger while there, and he took and sent pictures of the girls to Shanann. 1.15 p.m., Alexa activates due to trigger words, updates, synchronization, etc. 1.30 p.m., Watts takes pictures of the girls at the birthday party. 3.56 p.m., Watts tells Shanann that they are still at the birthday party. 4.46 p.m., Vivid logs a synchronization IP renewal or update. Many confuse this Vivint event with the time Watts came home, but that is not the case. The actual Vivint logs have not been publicly released. 4.56 p.m., Watts continues his search for volcanoes. 5.06 p.m., Watts contacts co-worker Cody Roberts. I have the whip checks for the survey 629. I'm going to go straight out there from my house in the morning. I will look at 319 as well and run the 1129 if you want. 5.07 p.m. Watts called Sandy Rusick and held a nearly 12-minute conversation. 5.20 p.m. Watts texts conversations with Roberts continues. 5.26 p.m. Watts searched Google for the Dead Sea Scrolls. 6.44 p.m. A photo of a refrigerator temperature setting was created in Watt's image file. 6.47 p.m. A photo of four chicken breasts on a barbecue grill was created in Watt's image file. Note that the technician does not state Watts took those photographs. Creating an image into a folder could also be a screenshot or a copied Google image. 7.46 p.m., Shanann asked for more pictures of the girls. Watts then resent the images he took earlier at the birthday party. 7.54 p.m., Shanann told Watts that the power went out during dinner with Cindy and Addie before the airport. She sent a photograph of the darkened restaurant. She commented on the photographs he just sent. Great job on Bella's hair. Watts replied, that sucks. Yeah, she cooperated, Shanann explained. Really bad dust storm, rain, thunder, and lightning. Shanann said Cindy bought their dinner. Shanann concluded, praying it doesn't cancel flight. Addie's flight was canceled this morning. 2020 hours. Shanann called Watts and held a nine-minute conversation, revealing how their talk went immediately after this call. She told Watts, sorry I bothered you. I just wanted to talk to you. 2031 hours. Shanann told Addie she can call Chris about Jack. He's up. 2033 hours. Shanann told Watts, thank you for taking good care of the kids this weekend so I can learn and work. I really appreciate it. 2045 hours. Watts returned a missed call to Addie and held a 60-minute conversation. Moments later, he told Shanann, you're welcome. Just talk to Addie. In their follow-up messages, it is clear Watts offered Addie mechanical advice on a car. 9 p.m. Watts' phone connects to his home router. We have a gap of approximately five hours from the birthday party up until Watts' phone reconnects to his home router of unknown whereabouts or activity of Watts and the children. And the infamous 111-minute conversation starts. 9.29 p.m. Shanann called Watts. He did not answer the call.
Moving on, I can give you a fair idea of Watt's movement and events using provided data I have analyzed. While on the phone with Kessinger, strange things occur. At 9.45 p.m., neighbor Nate's camera detects motion again. Eleven oh eight PM Shenan's flight takes off. Eleven nineteen PM The call between Watts and Kessinger ends. Eleven twenty PM Watts phone reconnects to his home router. Eleven twenty one PM Watts replied to the earlier message of Shenan about the delayed flight. Holy crap. Sorry, I passed out on the couch. That's gonna be late. 11.25 p.m., neighbor Nate's camera captures a motion and headlights of a vehicle pulling up. 12.47 a.m., Alexa logged an event. The next time Watt's phone reconnects to his home router, the connection to his router can be caused by absence, Watt's not being in his house, by being out of range to the network, but also by being on the phone with someone. Zero, one, two, five hours. Shanann told Cassie they had landed. This is the last outgoing communication found on Shanann's phone. 1.30 a.m. A witness observes a suspicious white vehicle on Highway 52, not far from the Watts house. What made the person call police? What was the witness so suspicious about? We might never know since law enforcement did not bother to follow up on that observation. So that was the documentary part two. What are you thinking? Did did Mark Boyce did a good did did he do? Oh, I can't even speak no more. Did he do a good job? <laughs> he said yesterday, "Come on, don't spend so much time with NK. You got work to do." <laughs> <laughs> yeah nice that you guys enjoyed um i'm definitely gonna work on the part three from next week so we have it by the end of next month <laughs> always something is coming up right so you guys do you have any questions what what did you like what didn't you like what should we have gone more into detail um, I always like feedback because, uh, you know, for the next document part of the documentary, I want to be uh, prepared. You cannot all give me positive feedback. Just say something. I mean, the, the editing was a little bit, but yeah. I mean, I just wanted to get it out there and I'm going to upload it um tonight or tomorrow in the right format so you don't have to zoom into your screen you're in love with mark boys now <laughs> yeah he's nice mark boys is good um i'm wondering where he is today but probably sleeping and dreaming of nk 
<laughs> yeah, he does have a good voice. Especially he can change his voices, right? So too fast to, you know, and still ha has a clear voice. Um, on the other hand, if I would have done this voiceover, oh my God, stuttering, <laughs> tiredness comes out, <laughs> deleting. <laughs> um, so I would say let's do another 10 minutes and then I am going off to bed, if that's okay with you guys, because um, tomorrow starts work for me again. Um I don't know if Mark Boys actually wears brown swim trunks. He likes that. He told me yesterday on the phone that he likes um, her, her brown bikini very much. <laughs> Next time in the documentary, we're going to start with Shannon coming home. And also, I'm going to show you Dawn's enhanced, authenticated footage not all of it but most part if I have permission from Don um, there was a good question and I can't find it anymore uh, are you going to do something on the autopsy yes yeah definitely distressing yeah, so there are a couple of things I came across when I actually made this um, documentary and that might be the reason I was so much delayed as well. Um, there is progress, but can't tell now. Um... I think he said exactly and this I hope this came across um like my my intention was to make that clear he did resend the messages he sent her before so um yeah I mean I'm not putting a theory out there it's just a possibility not saying it is fact it's just a possibility but based on data and stuff. But always keep in mind, you guys, we don't have everything. So if we had everything, we could probably solve this case in less than two days. Um, see you later, Dave. I'm having a massive delay on StreamYard. A massive delay. Yeah, I wanted to you know, to make that clear to you guys that also with the um, fridge picture and the picture he um, inserted in his uh, files of the barbecue with four chicken breasts on it. Um, I was looking through the discovery and this is the only time um, the technician actually states and I do believe him that for some weird reason um, that he did create an image file that means he could have had those pictures on his phone already and just put it in a different folder as well so it could be a screenshot google image something he downloaded and put in a different file or you know but the technician does not say that he actually took those pictures. So this would mean that nobody had saw had seen him. And I said to Dave yesterday, I was always under the impression when I um, was listening to Betty that she said something about a barbecue. And then this him taking a picture in my mind what was just on my mind. And then I went back to Betty's interview. And I actually heard that she never said that he had a barbecue. She said um, they had a barbecue weeks ago or we had a barbecue or something along those lines. But she never said he had a barbecue. Um, 
who had gallstones. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he if he even backed out of anything. I don't know. I have not made my mind up yet, really, because I change my mind as I go along the discovery like 50 times a day. <laughs> and then Don and Dave have to listen to my phone call rants. <laughs> yeah. He never heard the girls, right? Yeah. Also, the Vivint, um, just to say that again, the locks we see on the router are actually not Vivint locks, right? They are... Um, uh, Vivint, um, Vivint has its own system where the locks go to. And other than um, Alexa... Alexa works with the router's Wi-Fi. So every time something is wrong with the router, it will affect Alexa as well. But Vivint is different. That's, uh, that's, it has its own cloud, its own platform. So everything you see, it's only two or three alerts of Vivint anyway. Um, people assume that he came home be between four and five. That's what he said. And then you have that Vivin synchronization or update or could be anything that needs assistance of the router. Um, pulling, obviously, data and Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, but that's a myth. I mean, we don't really know if he came home, right? His phone, his personal phone, he had on him all the time because this is evident due to him taking pictures at the birthday party, um, all that kinds of stuff, sending messages, you know, and I bet you any money that they checked Lindstrom's router because they did so with the Thayers. And yeah, or maybe not their router, but the connection the phone had, they might have tested. So where it is evident to them they did not release anything but it is evident to them and they can follow his movements like everywhere um also regarding because someone um told me regarding the phone at survey you got to understand that the significant location is only locked in the area right so the picture he took and later on sent to NK. So it's the word is out there that he sent this picture to NK of his work laptop. Um, I forgot what I wanted to say. I'm so tired, you guys. I don't want to sound like NK with, I'm so tired, but I truly am tired. What did I want to say? Um, yeah. It only locks um, significant locations in the area. That doesn't mean that he was actually at Survey 319 taking this picture. Because I believe there's a reason why we don't see that. We They never really, they released everything like NK in her brown bikini and all some sort of bullcrap, but not that picture. And I really truly wonder why, because... Maybe we could have seen the background, you know, so it's not necessarily Survey 319. This is what I wanted to say. Um, massive delay. Thank you, Angie. And you guys also, thank you so much for your super chats. I'm definitely gonna... Um, your Alexa came on. <laughs> I share with Mug Boys. He did a great job. Really, truly a great job. Jamie? Why would I have a timeline where Jamie was? Probably at home with her kids. Hmm, maybe we find out. Who knows? 
I cannot tell you guys because I wasn't there, but we can only go with what we have. And that's not a lot. Yeah, see, mm, good night all. That's the thing. He took, he didn't take a picture. He downloaded or took a screenshot or whatever he did, but he did not actually take a picture of the fridge, of any fridge. Probably a stock photo. Her organs were dry. Yeah, that's true. That states in the autopsy report. So you guys, I'm going to do, starting sometime in the next, this month, um, I'm going to do a full discovery read-through. Because every time I read through, I find new stuff. So, and I'm curious what you guys come up with because so many subscribers and supporters and anyway, everybody who's in chat, you always have so great ideas and find stuff. And I also want to say a big thank you to Mandy S or Mandy C, Dave, I don't, I can't remember, um, for pointing me to the interview timestamp where she actually um, gets in a little argument with Ko Kobach about uh, you wanted him to send you proof that he was on site and then she goes like at work oh, I have I have enough from NK for the next week or so <laughs> fresh eyes are the best Debs. that's so true very 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 true friday is my birthday and i hope you all gonna join me we're gonna do have a little talk about the case and maybe about the documentary and stuff what i discovered just 15 minutes ago and did obviously not have the chance to put it in here um the trailer music is um i had to pay for it so if you want to use that, you better, I'm going to put the link up in the description on the actual documentary video. Um, you got to pay for if you want to use the songs or something like that, but I put the links in. All right, you guys, I can't, can't barely speak. I thank you all so, 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 so much for being here on a Monday afternoon. <laughs> crazy yeah work begins tomorrow for me and probably also for you guys let's see how the week goes and also thank you so 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 much for my mods to keep the nice uh, the, the chat nice but we're all nice people actually except Dave I heard he's dipshit Dave now and I'm dipshit something yeah just don't indulge in drama try not to I always tell myself try not to you know get angry but yeah sometimes it's unavoidable but yeah just be happy about the nice things in life and the great things on this earth and that's more worth than growing gray hair way too early turning 42 on I can't believe I'm turning 42 on Friday <laughs> I'm also unnice me too <laughs> ask Dave and Don I'm also unnice yeah but by the time I'm doing a life I have calmed down like quite a bit a dipshit family right <laughs> all right you guys have a good day have a good night, and I hope I see you all on Friday. Bye-bye.